I was thinking of different topics. I know you guys get a lot of, a lot of stuff thrown at you on these parts uh, that, that Dan has organized. It's, it's been amazing. I, I looked at some of the, the roster of speakers you guys have had, um, but also just in family heritage, you guys, it's incredible. The people you guys get to work with and are subjected to all the time. And it's, 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 it's quite a list. So for me, I was just kind of thinking what could, what could be different? What could be kind of a unique niche or something that kind of stands out? And so I hope this hits you guys the right way. Um, I'm going to share my screen and uh, we'll dive right in. And I, and I thought something that might be appropriate for every, every one of us, um, you know, as we think about wherever we're at in our life, wherever we're at in our career, uh, but is literally living a significant life. And I know we all kind of think of what does success look like, of course, you know, with our income and our milestones. And like, it was nice what Dan said in my intro and, and all those plaques and awards and my kids can care less and the money's coming and gone. And at the end of the day, it's, it's really about who are we impacting and who are we making a difference for in their life. And so, my hope is this kind of hits you right where it needs to hit you on a Friday morning. And maybe there's a nugget or two you, you can remember and, and latch on to in the, in the weeks and months ahead. So um, y'all can see my screen. Okay. Cool. I want to make sure as we dig in. So <clears throat> I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor. Just if you guys can take 20 seconds, just, you know, I mean, literally you can kind of just cruise through this 15, 20 seconds, but just if you have a pen, if you're typing, but just one word, so that, that this could be, a great listener. This could be, you know, some of those genuine, some of those a giver. Take another 10 seconds to just write out a couple more words you guys would love to see. Um, love to see happen for me, guys. How do you want to be described? If someone's talking about you, let's say I'm introducing someone like this morning, or, or one of you guys are my good friends. I'm talking to someone about they're going to meet Travis Wilson for the first time or Chad Bueller for the first time. And I'm saying, oh, man, let me remember back to all those years I knew Travis so well. Man, he is dot, dot, dot. And then, and then what words would follow? Right, and I don't know about you guys, but that motivates me big time. Like when you think about that, my, my list I always kind of think of, number one, I love that word unconditional. It's something I'm trying to be better at. I, I have been a very conditional person in a lot of areas of my life, and I'm not proud of that. And this is something I'm really trying to be better at. The second part is unwavering. I, I love just the idea of being committed. And obviously, you guys know that. We work with people that when they're both feet in, they're just a different human than when they got one foot in. Uh, to me, I love the idea of, of just, you know, when Dan talked about Jeff Rogers, that's one thing I respect about Jeff. He was, he was my director when I first started. And I always kind of think of Jeff as someone that just had a good, soft humility. He had never made it or arrived, no matter what the title was. Uh, and then on the flip side, there is an intensity. <laughs> there is a resilience that says, man, I'm not, I'm not giving up. There's a, there's a bounce back factor, right? You just have this crazy resilience about you. Life smacks you like it does for all of us. There's things like global pandemics. And then there's things like personal pandemics, right? We all have them. We all have had them. We're either coming out of one or we're in one right now or we're about to go into one. And, and we all know that. And so do you have that resilience? Do you stay the course, right? Uh, the next one is deep conviction. I always talk to my team of coaches about when we work with people, it's not the height of your logic, it's the depth of your conviction. And a lot of times we, we logic people to death, right? And that doesn't move them emotionally, but, but conviction does. And so you believe in what you're doing. Um, and then finally, my, my big one, and we'll kind of dig in on this, is, but it's just a man of impact. I love this, this, little, uh, this little choir. Let me go back here real quick. <laughs> it's just a, uh, there we go. Yeah, but as we think about impact, what does that look like, right? We all can kind of say, I, I bet as I go through this roster of people on this call, on this webinar, None of us wouldn't say we want to impact others, right? But then what does that really look like? You know, when we're kind of at the end, my, my wife's father passed away last year from uh, um, ALS, uh, otherwise known as Lou Gehrig's disease. And it's an ugly, ugly sucker, man. It's a, it's a, it, it, your body just shuts down. And when you see someone going through that over a year where you kind of know it's an impending end that's coming, 
Um, and you guys know, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. This is, this is what you guys talk to people about all the time, right? But, but it makes you think, what have you lived for? Like, what is the impact you've had? And, uh, and that's what I want to kind of tap in on, okay? So here's where I'm going to hit you, though. If our life, if, if one of our main goals is to, is to have more of a full joy, right, and, and a deeper purpose, unfortunately, you're not going to love this, but, but I feel like those are gained mostly, those are gained more powerfully through going through the pain, failure, and loss. Okay, and that's the, that's the ugly truth that I've realized more and more, and every year I realize it more watching humanity is that the, the true impact, the true joy, the, th the true purpose has to be experienced by going through the challenges. These are my little dudes. So I want to give you guys a couple little examples. So uh, this is when they were three years old, my twins years ago. Um, those were my, my firstborns. And uh, the next year after this picture was taken, um, I was March of 2013. I was prepping for another summer. It was actually my 20th summer. So Dan said I was 20 years in Southwestern prepping for that 20th year. And uh, my wife of 11 years said she didn't want to be married anymore. And to me, uh, one of the first things I thought is, man, what, what kind of a fraud am I going to look like in front of my boys? You know, to grow up now as a single dad and their, their own parents are divorced. What's the world going to look, look like at me? Well, I started getting used to life as a single dad and, and just accepting your situation, right? We all have, have been dealt cards that, that uh, we didn't ask for, but so that was kind of the new life. That was, that was the single life of, a, of a, someone that had gone through divorce. And for me personally, I'm sure for any of you guys, but, but man, family was everything. And that was embarrassing. You talk about dealing with shame, dealing with, I didn't want to talk to old friends because I knew they would, the first thing they would say is, hey, how's Jess? How's the family? And then I would have to be honest about the fact that basically I failed my family. And uh, here's what happens. This is a buddy a guy named Tom Mills that, we, that went through coaching for us for, for three years. And in the middle of his coaching, Tom's a big mortgage leader between Baltimore and Philadelphia, a big regional director. And uh, in the middle of his three years of coaching, uh, he went through a divorce. And guess who he wanted to talk about it in incredible depth? You got it. Yours truly, because someone could relate to him. This is one of our coaches, great friend, a guy named Jeff Brinson. He lives in LA, that's lower Alabama. <laughs> yeah, he always, he loves that joke. He's like, I live in LA, lower Alabama. And uh, Jeff's just got a heart of gold. And uh, man, a couple years into to working with us, um, unexpectedly, he was going through a divorce. And I'll, and I'll never forget the phone call where he reached out to me and he said, man, I, I just want to talk to you off, offline. This has nothing to do with business. But I want to talk to you about how do you navigate this divorce thing? Because I'm, I'm rocked. And, and uh, the conversations that happened after that. You guys, the greatest joy and purpose comes from our pain, our failures, and our loss. That, that's when we truly can impact people. <clears throat> this is one of my three or four best friends in the world. Brent Whitman is one of the coaches on my team. <clears throat> Brent lives in uh, Minneapolis. And uh, uh, these, are, these are some hard ones to talk about. Brent, and this is his, his kids here, obviously, and his wife, Katie. These guys have been on multiple incentive trips with us. I've gotten to know Brent and Katie in Iceland and Ireland and all these different trips we've been on together. Well, long story short, they're, they're now separated. And guess who's had a lot of deep, deep conversations with Brent about going through that and being that dad. You guys get where I'm going with this. I'll keep going. This is my, my new family. This is my wife, Desiree, Dan talked about, and we're now a blended family. So her and her daughter, Hartley, we married and I've adopted Hartley. Um, and uh, this guy, my, my little dude, Van, and, and, and Dan referred to this a little earlier, but I want to give you guys one other little example. He uh, is just a wild man. We call him the Vanimal because he, his name is Van, but he's, he's, as you, you know, can imagine, he's literally the animal. This is uh, the first time that the five of us, as we were kind of getting closer to probably doing this marriage thing and having a blended family, uh, we went on this big backpacking trip, and it was like the first time the five of us had gone on a, on a really cool trip away. Um, and Van was being Van. I'm not proud that he's an Oregon Ducks fan, but he is. <laughs> he loves green. We came home. Um, and within a couple weeks, his, his face started to swell up and we took him in, got him on antibiotics. We thought he had had an allergic reaction to shellfish um, because we had done a lot of crabbing and oysters and whatnot. And man, it wasn't working. So another antibiotic wasn't working. Finally, the third time we went in, uh, the local family doctor said, man, you guys should just take him on up to Seattle Children's just in case. 
probably nothing, but, but get his blood checked and uh, see what's going on with this little dude. And that night we heard that Van has leukemia. And this, this picture is a screenshot of my cell phone at 12.02 AM, you can see, um, when I literally was looking up, what is leukemia? Because <laughs> I was ignorant and, and completely ignorant. And, you know, again, I know this is your guys' world. This is stuff you guys deal with on such a common basis and you talk to families about. Uh, but as a dad that only has these two kids, and to hear that, that my seven-year-old boy um, now just went from the vanimal, this crazy kid, to all of a sudden he's got leukemia and not really understanding what that meant and what type of leukemia and what is that going to mean for the rest of us and our family and all that. Man, that's, that's a sobering moment. The next day, this is a quick screenshot of, a, of a, uh, something that hit my truck when I was driving up to the hospital. Um, again, it was a lot of back and forth to Seattle Children's Hospital. And uh, some of you guys may have heard of this. I'm not going to get off on a spiritual tangent, but it, it is crazy how things show up. And I remember pulling into Seattle Children's Hospital and trying to compose myself because I know I needed to look, you know, calm before I talked to my son who, who needed his dad to be, you know, not a, a weeping idiot. And uh, I remember this moment of, in, of, of basically acceptance started hitting me where I looked around in the parking lot and I started seeing all these license plates from like Wyoming and Oregon and Idaho and Alaska and realizing, man, a lot of these families had uprooted their whole lives to be at this hospital in Seattle called Seattle Children's Hospital for their families. And I wasn't alone. And actually I was quite fortunate because we live 45 minutes away from there. And we have businesses that are flexible and we have the financial means, we had insurance, we had a lot of those kind of things that for us, and it's crazy what can happen when perspective returns. And this song came on in my truck and I had never heard it before. Um, you can look it up later, but I tell you what, that was about the most, yeah, I mean, I, I bawled like a, <laughs> like a kid. And it, it, it really uh, re-energized me though as a dad, and I'm obviously not gonna have time to play it. But here's what happened in the coming weeks. Okay, that next week, uh, so Van's in the hospital, Obviously, my wife and I get a Sunday morning away because we still have two other kids at this point. So his twin, PK, the, the little boy, and then Hartley, my new daughter, uh, we're taking them to church. And as we're leaving Calvary Community Church in Sumner, Washington, this lady rushes up to us and says, hey, Ron, I want to I wanna, I wanna grab you for a second. Um, and she says, I want to I introduce you to my son. And, and he has gone through leukemia treatments for, uh, years ago when he was younger but he's been removed for a couple years now, and this is my son. And I tell you what, you guys, I, I know I don't know a lot of you on this call, but I, I have, you know, if you believe in angels, like this boy to me was an angel. And I literally, I just stared. I mean, the kid probably thought I was a freak because I just stared at him. <laughs> but I looked at him and I just saw this normal, healthy boy. And uh, it was so inspiring that, that his family's pain, failure, and loss was impacting me as a dad and was giving me hope and it was giving me strength because what we were about to go through was going to rock us. Right. But we had to see examples of people that had gone through it, it made all the difference. This is some of the coming weeks. It's crazy. What obviously something like leukemia does, this is that same little boy. And obviously the chemo treatments start turning into it's, it's, it's crazy looking back at some of these pictures. Um, but I tell you what, we all have different definitions of what a hero is, right? This kid started turning into a hero to a lot of people. You see his little fist clenched, he's a fighter. And that's what happened. He first of all started inspiring his brother and his sister. Let me keep going. Obviously inspired me and our family. This is a little boy hunter that had a much worse prognosis than Van. And there were kids like Hunter that he would walk around when Van was able to in Seattle Children's Hospital, he would walk around the halls and he would talk to other kids about what they, this is Dr. J, his chief oncologist. Um, <laughs> my wife made him his head man. That's a Chicago Bears, Dan. You'll, uh, there you go, if you're a Bear fan, but uh, 
the doctors and oncologists and, and medical professionals there were inspired by Van, just his spirits lifting them up. This is my good friend, Travis Bride and his son, Lucas, who's going through brain cancer treatments and how much we've talked to, to, to Travis and Lucas about their, their deal. Um, this is my friend, Steve and his son, Ash, and some of the things they're going through. This is a little girl, Genesis, that we were able to come, our whole family, uh, and spend the night before Christmas with who was going through a much tougher thing than our family was. And uh, we were able to maybe be a little bit of a light for Genesis and her family. I'll wrap up with this. I'm no different than you guys. I, I can have these moments, but then later this afternoon, I'm gonna lose perspective. I'm gonna get small, I'm gonna whatever. This is a massive uh, hanging frame on our wall in our house. Um, and all it is is a reminder. You guys, I know I'm preaching to the choir. A lot of you guys are familiar with affirmations. You're familiar with self-talk. You're familiar with the idea of trying to control your thoughts. Th these are examples. And again, this is not a spiritual part. Whatever you believe in is up to you. But for us, the things that we want our family to be known for are, are, are at the end of the day are not awards, not running races, not plaques or, or how many units we sold or whatever. Those things are great too. Believe me, if you know me, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm getting after it. The rest of the day, I'm going for it. So don't get me wrong. Like, but, but man, <clears throat> serving God first, loving always and forgiving quickly, giving generously, encouraging and building each other up, focusing on the positive, living with gratitude. Boy, that's the stuff that makes the biggest difference in the world. And, uh, and that's the stuff that hopefully we can make an impact for a lot of others as we go through this journey. So with that, I will unshare my screen and, uh, Thank you guys for inviting me to be with you guys this morning. You know, how do, how do people share significance in their jobs? Like for the folks on this call, um, what's the best way for them to, to really kind of work and, and connect with their uh, clients in that kind of a deep way? Well, number one, I'd say listening. Because I, I just think that's something I'm trying to be better at every, every day is, is shutting up and listening more. Um, and I think when there's an open door and, and when we're, we, we, people feel like it's a safe space uh, and they can share honestly and, and what they share with you is, is uh, not about, it's, it's just authentic and you're able to really listen with a genuine heart. To me, that's the biggest thing that I'm working on and I know we work with our coaches on, um, but you guys know it's truly listening to understand, not listening to reply and try to sound smart. But I think if people feel like you, you know, you all know the quotes, people don't know how much you know until they know how much you care. And if, if, if I'm a great listener, if I'm really an active, engaged listener, it's crazy how people open up differently. And these people that actually are not usually that vulnerable or transparent become that way. Um, and, then, and then maybe being able to pick your spots where you share some vulnerability or you share. So when you do speak, the speaking you do means more. Your words actually matter more. Um, and maybe you're able to share little glimpses of things you're working on. Like I'll give an example. This is... Um, always got like with my coaches, I've always got what we call like a 40 day challenge going on. These little things or I'll show visuals in a world where everybody's got their, you know, their, their, their mobile devices and everything's electronic. Sometimes paper's awesome. <laughs> right. And I don't go on an airplane. I don't go anywhere without this. This is my faith affirmations. Um, you know, so just that kind of thing, because that, that's an, that's an example of me sharing vulnerability to someone maybe is that I need this because I get ugly. Like my head goes into, crazy spaces, especially when I do those stupid mountain runs, <laughs> right? So this stuff brings me back, so. That's great. Uh, Patrick Samuels had a question. Um, you know, how did you stay motivated, focused, and engaged when you were going through that with, uh, you know, with your son, with Van? And uh, he also pointed out that he knows that, you know, during that season, you finished at the top of the charts in your business. How were you able to balance that? Yeah, man, Patrick. Thank you. And, this, and I, <clears throat> that was almost going to be my talk this morning was on, um, and that actually not to, I'll be a self promoter here on the book, but we, we get into really the power of focus. Um, so number one was being an example. And, and that's what I love about you guys is everybody, you, you guys are about multiplication. You know, you're not doing this alone. You're not on a silo. You're not a one man army or one, or one woman army. You're, you're there to grow and multiply. Um, and for me, I can't not live life to try to be an example. So whether it's to coaches or to other humans or clients or obviously to my other kids. And so my kids needed me to be an example and to not go into a hole and not turn to things like alcohol or other things to cope and numb the pain, um, which you are tempted to do in times like that because the pain's deep. Um, 
So Patrick, that to me was like, okay, how can I be the best example? Like to me, what focus looks like is when I was with him at Seattle Children's Hospital, we're building incredible Lego creations. We're doing puzzles. Like there's nothing in the world going on. This is off, right? And then when I'm with my other son and my daughter and my new wife, like, boy, it's all about them. I wasn't trying to, and then obviously when it was time to work, and this was hard, I'm not going to act like it was easy, but I tried to really work on compartmentalization. And when it was time to, to have, handle coaching calls or prospect or hit the phones or really, you know, work the numbers like you guys do. Um, but I really was blown away at the power of what focus looks like and how, you know, we can get more fruit than we think we're capable of in, in a short amount of time. You know, when we're really locked in, it's really powerful what a human can do. Um, and, and I just figured, what the heck, let's go for this, Patrick. And that, that to me was like, maybe this can be an example for my kids. So. That's great. Hey, um, one last thing, Ron, I, you know, we've got a, another minute or two here. I'd love to have you talk a little bit about, you know, you've talked about with Southwestern Advantages. Maybe you can uh, explain to the group here a little bit more, kind of uh, uh, give yourself a little promo on that as well as the book. I'd love to, love to have you share a little bit about that before we wrap up. Oh, well, th well, thank you, brother. I, yeah, very brief. I mean, the funny thing about my job is we just help people get through crap. Like that's all coaching is. I mean, I, I always kind of talk about like Bill Gates has talks about the four coaches in his life that have helped make him who he is. You know, you, you think Michael Phelps talked about the coach that helped him with stroke technique and someone that helped him with nutrition and mindset. And so having a coach, we're no different. I, I have a coach that's kind of outside my bubble to help me get through head trash, blind spots, help me role play language, help me work on just kind of sharpening things, help me stay accountable, right? And so um, that's our business, Southwestern Consulting. I mean, for us, we do a lot of group speaking, workshops and keynotes and whatnot, but our, our real niche is the one-on-one, -on -one. you know, the one-on-one -on -one where we match someone with a coach and then we, you know, meet you where you're at and just obviously celebrate the joys with you and, and kind of encourage when needed, kick in the butt when needed, you know, kind of adapt as needed. And so that's kind of what we do. Um, the book is not out till September, uh, unfortunately, but um, it's, Dan mentioned, it's redefining possible. It's proven strategies to break belief barriers and then create new normals. And so um, it's co-written. It's myself and Dustin Hillis, who's our CEO. Um, and he's, he's got some fascinating stories, man. The way his mind works, I learned so much from Dustin. And, uh, it's really neat. So we kind of do a deep dive into, into things like focus, into things like what true confidence and ownership look like and, and, and faith and belief and some of those kind of principles. But the end goal is what we really talked about in this PowerPoint was impact. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter a whole lot unless we're making a difference for others.